Beatty, it's good to have you Cheers. on the show. Same here. Good to see you guys. Mm. Well, as with any trade show, we eventually get to a proper, I shouldn't say trade show, this is a business forum, yes. but with any, yeah. any forum event, we always get to a proper manufacturing happy hour when the happy hour rolls around. So this is a very literal question right now. So, Fady, when someone asks you, hey, you know, what is mass robotics? What do you do? How do you answer that if you're having a beer with someone? Yeah, I uh, just say mass robotics is the largest hub for robotic startups in the U.S., Basically, what we do is we help companies move from prototyping to production. So most incubators and accelerators, they focus companies, move from an idea to a prototype. Mm -hmm. um, and in robotics and manufacturing, we know that uh, this is not enough because uh, once you are in the prototyping stage, it's very hard to move from there to production. So we put together a very unique model. Uh, I call it a startup escalator model. Okay, startup escalator, got yeah, it. Just to differentiate ourselves from sure. incubation and acceleration <laughs> and just kind of complicate things yeah, uh, yeah. more. Um, but uh, it's really very simple. It's um, three key um, pillars for the model. The first one is a shared physical infrastructure because this is one of the problems. You are not just developing software where you need a laptop and internet. Mm -hmm. You need physical stuff. You need 3D printers. You need uh, a machine shop. You need uh, uh, laser cutters. You need lots of sensors. You need lots of components. And if you are a small company, it's very expensive to build all of this on your own. Mm -hmm. So we developed a state-of-the-art, world-class, 40,000 square feet of shared office and lab space in the heart mm -hmm. of Boston. Yep. And uh, we made all of this accessible for the companies that get accepted to mass robotics. And there is no time limit on how long they can stay there. It's a, kind of a self-regulating process because you get to pay. It's not a free space mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that this is a real market dynamics and open market uh, approach. Sure. And once you are in mass robotics, you get access to office space. You get access to lab space. You get access to our machine shop, CNC. 3D printers, sensors library, all of that. So this is the first pillar. The second one is access to corporate partners. So we went out and we built a network of 40 corporate partners. Those are a mix of end users of robotics, suppliers, manufacturers, and also investors in robotics. So today we have companies like Amazon Robotics, FedEx, Honda, Mitsubishi Electric, Analog Devices. And just last year we added uh, Teradyne, PNG, uh, AWS, Danfoss, and 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 few more. So, um, and the idea is again, if you are just starting kind of to build your product, yep, it takes a long, long time to develop relationship with those large corporates. So we brought all of these relationships, and it's pretty accessible for the companies once they are a mass robotics. The third piece is the programming and the network uh, um, kind of element, which mm -hmm. is. We do lots of networking events, demo days, deep dives into manufacturing, into logistics, into uh, advanced manufacturing, all of that. And the idea is to connect the users with the developers, with the investors, so that you have a very vibrant community. Yeah. And uh, you just maximize the interaction that's happening. Yeah, I've always thought of you guys as fostering collaboration in the robotics world, getting people to work together. When you talk about being a startup escalator, bringing in the corporate partners, having that networking yep. folks, it all seems to, to add up to that. Jake, I'm going to pass it to you next for uh, the next question. Yeah, so I mean, we, we really got through the whole run through. One of the companies that comes to mind, um, you know, you can share it. You know, how, how did you help um, Waypoint go yep. from a, a startup company to help them transition through capital? And, and really, you part the, the company that helped them, helped them through the acquisition yep. was also something you connected with Mass Robotics. So, Very true. you know, let's go through a success story. And then also then, how is that impacting the future of manufacturing? Manufacturing always was viewed as a really closed space. No one wanted to work together. There was no discussions. Everyone was a rival. I'm not going to help you because you're infringing on my territory. Yeah. How is that changing now? Yeah, so uh, Waypoint is a great company. It's a great example. Jason is an uh, amazing guy that uh, we have been working with. I actually have known Jason since he was at Sci-Fi Works. So, uh, and, and this was right at the time that we were starting just mass robotics. So 
We go way back. And uh, when he was uh, starting Waypoint, uh, we had lots of conversation with me and the rest of the team at Mass Robotics. And uh, we really helped in terms of uh, connection to talent, connection to uh, some of the customers, some of the corporate partners that we have. We uh, put him in touch with uh, Mitsubishi Electric, for example, P&G, and a few other companies. And um, at certain point, one of the, the, the key things that we provide is because of the unique position we have in the ecosystem, we have this exposure to hundreds of companies. So when a CEO like Jason come to us and say, this is how the company look like in terms of revenues, in terms of product development, in terms of funding, where should I go from there? What would be the right way to go? Should I raise more funding? Should I seek acquisition? Where, where would I go? And because we have this exposure, we are in a very unique position to give some insights about the collective dynamics of the market. So one of the things I did at that time is, uh, you know, Jason, um, I don't know exactly uh, what you should be doing, but I know who can help you. And I put him in touch with one of our corporate partners, which is Cowan, a 100-year investment bank. Mm -hmm. So those are guys who have the data, have the network, have the insights about everything about kind of the financial next step. And then Cowan was the key broker between Locus and Waypoint. And ultimately, we know the story. Locus ended up acquiring Waypoint, which was a, a great win for everyone. And for Locus, for Waypoint, for Cowan, and for Mass Robotics. And I think for the larger robotics community in general, because it just increased investors' confidence. Because it's not enough to come up with cool technology, and it's not enough to sell it, and it's not enough to raise tons of funding mm -hmm. unless you actually can exit yeah. and everyone can cash yeah. out. So this is very important to complete this cycle. And I'm very excited over the last seven years that we have seen many exits. I mean, for a long time, Kiva was the only kind of story we can brag about right. in robotics. Yeah. Yep. But then we have Berkshire Gray. We have, I mean, Locus, I mean, probably they will go public very soon at market cap above the $2 billion valuation. So all of these are great success stories for the, the collective robotics community. And for the second half of your question about manufacturing, I think it's changing a lot because it's not the traditional kind of manual manufacturing. Now we are speaking about advanced manufacturing. It's, uh, it's about flexible manufacturing. It's about developing cells. It's using collaborative robots together with uh, highly customized manufacturing. I mean, uh, uh, Daniel, Daniel Theobald, uh, he always spoke about the mass production and quantities of one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think manufacturing is changing. And, and one of the key thrusts that we have in mass robotics is advanced manufacturing. And we have been working with local manufacturers in Massachusetts. We have been working with the ARM Institute. Uh, and it's a, it's a super fundamental thing, not only for the industry, I, I would say even for the, the country as a whole. Uh, because not only about creating jobs, it became a matter of a national security. Right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, if we cannot produce some of the essential and critical products that we have and, and we are fully dependent on other countries to manufacture those for us, it's a problem. Right? And, um, and, and, and the other key question that sometimes we don't speak about is the actual manufacturing of robots. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting meta here. Yeah. Like, we always think about robots, robots making stuff. Making but how do we make robots? Yeah. Exactly. Who's going to be the hub for manufacturing the robots of the world? Is it the US? Somewhere else. So, I think it's a fundamental question. I think that now. Where, where is that right now for someone that might not be familiar with, with robots? Uh, in terms of robots. Uh, yeah, where they're being made. Where's that shaping up? Who's, I, I who's guess we, gonna, we, do we talk. Talk industrial robots or AMRs, AGVs? What yeah. do you want to? So it's a thank you for yeah. pointing this out. Is, yeah. is what's robots? You know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I get this question a lot. I mean, when I speak with, I mean, investors and corporates, and I mean, lots of. Uh, what do you mean by robots? Is it yeah. humanoids or what do you mean? I came up with this simplification of what a robot is, mm -hmm. and in my mind, it's automation. So something that moves. Yeah. Plus, mm -hmm. AI, a little bit of intelligence, this mm -hmm. equals robots. Mm -hmm. So, if you take the AI out of it, it's automation. And if you take the automation out of it, 
it's the software AI. If you mix those together, then you get robotics. Interesting. It's an interesting so, yeah, I haven't heard that. I've, I've never heard that's that why, terminology before. That's why an iPhone is not a robot in, in this definition because it has tons of AI, mm -hmm. but it does not move. Yeah. There is no actual motion there. The iPhone uh, example always makes it really easy to visualize. It, yeah. Because right? everyone's got one. And, and a drone is a robot. Mm -hmm. and, and a self-driving car is a robot. A truck, an autonomous truck is a robot. A uh, collaborative robot, obviously, is a robot. And uh, I think also robotics is not only the complete platforms, the full stack, the hardware and software, but the feeding technology. I mean, machine vision. Mm -hmm. IoT is, is, I mean, it's the boundaries are very blurry between like IoT and robotics. And I think eventually what we will be speaking about is not AI, not robotics, not automation. We'll be speaking about smart systems. So we'll be speaking about smart manufacturing systems. Yeah. We'll be speaking about smart logistic systems. We'll be speaking about smart construction systems. This is what's going to happen. Eventually, the end user doesn't care about all of these terminologies. They yeah. want something that works, it's efficient, it's cost effective, and all of they that. They just want a smart system. I mean, it makes Here perfect sense. Yeah. This is not the direction I expected this no, to go tonight, not, but this, no, is, this has not. been great. So we're, we're rolling here. We're at, we're at the end of this discussion, so how do we want to wrap this? I, I'd say let's go back to mass robotics here a little bit. You know, How do sure. people get aligned with you guys or connect with you, work with you, maybe the easier yeah, way to describe I, it? I think there are different ways that uh, people can get connected. with. If you are a startup, uh, obviously you can apply to become a resident of mass robotics. We have okay. an online application. You just go through it. Uh, if you are a large corporate uh, and you want to become a partner of Mass Robotics and basically leverage the network, the access, the expertise that we have, you can reach out to become a corporate partner. Um, if you are a student and you want to get exposed to some of the STEM programs that we have, we have some interesting STEM activities. Uh, actually, uh, last year we launched uh, a program called Jumpstart. Mm -hmm. A very impressive program for high school students. And basically, we pay the students to attend these sessions. And they have a secured, guaranteed internship in one of the corporate uh, sponsors of the program. So fascinating, amazing program. It's just um, uh, a very impressive. The, you look at the, the young kids and, and how much engaged they are. Um, it, it just gives us a lot of hope and opti optimism for the, uh, the future. So you can um, reach out. We, um, we have a newsletter, regular one, that um, we advertise all what's happening, new residents, new partners, all the events. Um, yeah, so it's uh, lots of activities. Our website is massrobotics.org. Yep. And uh, anyone can go there and, and subscribe to our newsletter and uh, reach out to us. And that's Mass Robotics, like Massachusetts. But, you know, from what I heard, you know, you're talking about startups. You're talking about big corporations. Yeah. You're talking about students. You're really helping make robots for the masses. When, when appealing we, to the masses, oh, if you will. A, Yeah, it's a very good point. <laughs> when we were choosing the name for uh, our organization, the, uh, the founders, we came together and we had a long debate about that. And we ended up saying, I mean, we had different views. Like, I mean, we don't want to give the impression that it's only regional focused thing. Yeah. And then we came to the conclusion, you know what? Uh, we will call it mass robotics, but deep inside we know it's a critical mass of robotics mm. activities. Ooh. And Man, we have deep. been helping companies out of Massachusetts, even companies outside of the U.S. Yeah. Uh, our corporate partners are from all over the world. So... Uh, don't, don't, don't get the word mass kind yeah. of uh, uh, limit uh, your imagination uh, of what I, you can I, do I was with hoping, I was hoping my wordplay might unveil another story. As That's a great story. Well, <laughs> I, I don't think we can wrap up any better than that. Hey, a final cheers, Fady. Thanks so much for jumping on Thank the show. Thank you very much, Chris. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you for hosting me.